Our next guest is a CNN political commentator and senior advisor to the Lincoln Project. She's here to discuss all things Election Day. And believe me when I tell you, there is a lot to cover. Please welcome Tara Setmayer. Thank you so much for having me. Hi, Tara. Tara. Thank you for being with us. Yeah, welcome. Um, first things first, for those who don't know, me included, what is the Lincoln Project? Uh, thanks, Garcelle. Uh, so the Lincoln Project is a group of former Republican consultants who got together last year and decided that enough was enough. Something needed to be done about Trump and Trumpism. And given the fact that most of the Republican Party leadership was too cowardly to stand up to Trump and his violation of norms, institutions, and ideals in this country, they said, listen, let's take our skill sets and put them together and do some ads to um, go after Trump and hold him accountable and his enablers through the election. And it's turned into an unbelievable pro-democracy movement. And uh, with millions of supporters, we, we had no idea that it would become what it's become. Um, I'm not one of the original founders, I'm one of the original senior advisors, um, but it has just been absolutely extraordinary that we've been able to give voice to people who felt politically homeless and felt like, you know, what are people doing? What can we do? How can we get involved? And, and our ads have been really, really hard hit and it's just been an absolute pleasure to be involved in something like this, fighting for our constitutional republic. But he, I don't I think he's a, a, a true Republican, Tara. Do you, oh, Trump? No, no, yeah. no, Lonnie, he's not. There's, there's nothing Republican about him, um, you know, in policy and his behavior and in, you know, what, what traditional Republicans used to say. You know, we said, if you listen to the Republicans of 2016 who ran against him, they told you what they thought of him. You know, he wasn't a Republican. He, you know, he That's was, true. he's, he's so contradictory to so many things that Republicans alleged, alleged, allegedly stood for. And then they all fell in line, which is part of the big yeah. disappointment. You know, he's not a Republican. Yeah, he's, he's using that. He's a Trumplican. He's a Trumplican, as we said. Yeah. He's a Trumplican. <laughs> well, to your best guess, Tara, um, to your best guess, what will today and tonight actually look like? So I, I'm very encouraged by the amount of voter participation this time around. Yeah. Because this is what happened. Like, you know, we saw in years past where you didn't have the same level of engagement. And when you don't engage, then you end up with a government and elected officials that you didn't really want. So I'm right. thrilled to see all of these records being broken with early voting. It's extraordinary. Mm -hmm. But I also want people to realize that we may not have the traditional winner, you know, this network calls so-and-so is the winner because of COVID, because of all of the changes in the way that we vote, that it's okay if it takes a couple days to get a certified yeah. winner. So I want everyone just to be to be cautious about that. Don't freak out if they're if if Pennsylvania, for example, can't declare a winner because they have to count ballots a little bit later. Every state has different right. rules. So um, mm -hmm. I'm hoping that it's decisive enough so that it's not close because I God knows what Trump will do if it's close and that concerns me. But I just want everyone mm -hmm. to um, just to be cautiously optimistic and, and believe the system will work. Yeah. Tara, too. what voting demographics do you think will make the biggest difference this year? So another thing that's been encouraging about this has been the role of 18 to 29 year olds, the young, the youth vote. You know, I remember when I was that age talking about, hey guys, you gotta go out and vote because that's been one of the, yeah. the least engaged, you know, they may go out in March, right. but they wouldn't go to the polls. That is not right. the case this time. We are seeing extraordinary movement in the 18 yep. to 29 year old Yay. demographic, which is fantastic. So great. Um, and I yeah. think that's because of a couple things. One, this is the, the generation that's grown up with mass school shootings. And so the, the gun control issue is one that's uh, forefront for them. And also COVID has impacted them uh, enormously. Touchstone moments yeah. in their lives, like graduations and parties and you know, various yeah. things they haven't been able to celebrate because yeah. of COVID. And it's directly, you know, related to Donald Trump's failure in this response. So there's a lot of motivation there. And also with racial justice and what happened with George Floyd, um, that's another motivating factor. So that's amazing. Yeah. Also suburban women. Suburban women have had enough. If you look at the wow. collapse of Donald Trump's support in suburban areas yeah. from Philadelphia to Texas to Arizona, um, suburban women are playing a huge role in what happens in this election. And the over 65 demographic in places like Florida 
and Arizona. Republicans usually win that vote. Donald Trump is not winning that vote right now. He's losing it to Biden. So a combination of those three major demographics, I think, will ultimately lead to a, ultimately lead to a Biden win. Well, Tara, thank you so much for sharing your, you know, sharing your insight with us. And, you know, thank you for all that you do to to just help us to understand this. Please come back and see us. You can catch Tara tonight live when she co-hosts The Breakdown on the Lincoln Project's YouTube channel and on her weekly podcast, Honestly Speaking with Tara. And of course, don't forget to vote, vote, vote.